All eyes ahead for 2019. We're here to report on the future of the Dallas Cowboys. We move forward with new coaches. We break down the draft, fine tune the roster, and ask who's getting paid and who's got to wait. And as usual, we bring you insider access to OTAs and mini camps, priming you for 2019. We're the Blitz, and we're bringing it all to you straight from the start. Week one of 16 weeks of the Blitz here throughout the offseason from the start. Let's go, Lindsey Draper, Bill Jones. It is going to be good. We've got the big green scouting notebook, and that is all I came to make sure we have today. Well, and the big green NFL draft scouting notebook, a staple of the Cowboys offseason. And I get started with it on this weekend every year, scouting combine weekend, as we uh, chart all the measurables on these draft prospects. And uh, so over the course of the next eight weeks or so leading up to the draft in Nashville at the end of April, we'll be diving into the Big Green Notebook. Bill has one of these every single year uh, in case you have been living under a rock. Also, <laughs> Jason Witten coming out of retirement earlier on at the end of this week, Bill. It's all anyone's been talking about. How big was this uh, shock factor for you? Uh, the, the shock <laughs> factor was uh, immense. And uh, yes, Jason Witten uh, comes out of the Monday Night Football broadcast booth, returns to the Cowboys on a one-year deal, very manageable as far as the salary cap is concerned for this Cowboys uh, team. And you could tell that he really missed football a lot. Uh, you know, it was an offer he couldn't refuse a year ago. But now, after a lot of criticism as far as his one year in the broadcast booth, uh, I think though he, he really wants to get back to competitive football. And he will turn 37 on May 6th. So this is a 37-year-old tight end. It will not be the same Jason Witten as far as his snaps that he's getting uh, throughout the season. Cowboys like the young tight ends that they have on their roster and what a great mentor for Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz and perhaps someone that they, they, they draft if Rico Gathers is still on the team as well. Uh, but uh, for Witten to, to come back out of retirement that shows how much he missed it his year away. Uh, I think he's been training at all. I think during he this probably football has. Season, yeah. during this and and I think maybe they thought it entered his mind uh, at the end of last year. There were some rumors, and we asked him about it uh, at the when he presented the Jason Witten Collegiate Man of the Year Award, and he said, oh, no, it just wouldn't work. But now when you read through the lines of that, it wouldn't work as far as that team is concerned. But now you read through the lines of that, and you can tell he's been thinking about it for a while. But he understands you have to get in at the beginning, and that's exactly what he's doing, getting in at the beginning of this offseason. And the beginning of this offseason has not started well, Bill, for Randy Gregory, suspended indefinitely again, and just a shame for someone who has so much talent. But what does this mean right now as a whole? Well, you know, he's suspended in indefinitely, and the Cowboys, from the sound of it, in Indianapolis at the scouting combine this week, they sound like that they uh, hope that they will be able to have Randy Gregory's services back on the football field. Of course, everyone just wants him to get turned around as far as a person is uh, concerned and deal with the demons that he has in his life. But... Um, you know, he's coming off the best season that he's had in his career. There was hope there uh, coming off a six-sack season, but now it's the fourth suspension of his NFL career. For more on Randy Gregory, here's Jason Garrett at the Combine. Yeah, you know, our eyes were wide open about what Randy's situation was when we drafted him. And, uh, you know, we fully support Randy. Uh, Randy's a good young man, and he did a really good job for us this year uh, after working uh, through a lot of different obstacles. And unfortunately, he's had a setback, and uh, he's not going to be with us for the near term, uh, but we'll continue to support him. He's a good young man. He's worked very hard to, to try to address some challenging issues. And uh, again, our eyes were wide open to it at the outset. We'll continue to try to support him and provide a good structure for him to be his best. All right, and not news, of course, Bill, but we've got to touch on the fact that there are new coaches, but not new faces uh, on the offensive side of the ball with Kellen Moore and John Kitna now in the building at new positions. Yes, and uh, Kellen Moore promoted from quarterbacks coach to offensive coordinator. I got a chance to talk with Dak Prescott about that the day it was announced. Uh, he, uh, Dak was making an appearance in Atlanta during uh, Super Bowl week, and he is fully on board with Kellen Moore becoming the offensive coordinator. He thinks he is a star in the making with his creativity and so forth, just his mind for football. And I think he's probably excited about John Kitna coming here as well. Of course, he got a, a chance to work with Kitna a little bit uh, 
uh, even at the Pro Bowl in Orlando uh, last month or in back in January. All right, guys, we're taking our first break from the Blitz here, but when we come back, we are going upstairs to the Riders' bullpen to talk with Nick Eatman, get his thoughts on everything going on here at the Star earlier this week. Stick around. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. And by Dallas Cowboys Football Club. For the ultimate Dallas Cowboys experience, tour the Star in Frisco, where the Cowboys train and work. For more information, visit thestarinfrisco.com slash tours. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. I mean, I'm hope I'm confident we can get a deal done. I don't know the timing, but I'm very confident we can get a deal done. I mean, we, we think everybody's on the record, from Jerry to myself to Jason to Will, what we think of D-Law. Welcome back into the Blitz. You're looking at the free agent list for the Dallas Cowboys and Bill Jones. Obviously, Demarcus Lawrence is the priority, but that is a lot of names when you really break it down. Yep, but as you heard there from Stephen Jones talking about Tank Lawrence, very confident a deal will get done. Now we will see how quickly a deal gets done on Demarcus Lawrence as that franchise tag day is coming up on Tuesday, just 48, uh, less than 48 hours away now. And so if they don't want to use a second franchise tag on Demarcus Lawrence, there's your deadline to get the uh, long-term deal done. Let's bring in Nick Eatman now from the writer's bullpen here at the Star. And let's talk about the big story of the week is back on Thursday. Jason Witten announces, Nick, that he is coming out of retirement to not coach. He's going to play football, play tight end for the Cowboys. What was your reaction? Well, I mean, the first reaction was what check the date. I mean, I didn't think April had started just early and I, I didn't I, you know, no one was believing it. I was like, no, there's no way this can't be right. Someone's telling us uh, playing a joke. But uh, once you really, you know, realize what's going on, I think I think the thought is that, yeah, it, this is actually a, a good move. This is a, a good thing. Uh, this is a good young football team that has a hole at tight end. And so here, here's a guy that's obviously played it, played it well, going to go to the Hall of Fame. And and so I, it seems like it's a good fit and, and that's something that he said in his statement that this was a, a, a team with some young rising stars and you know he wanted to be a part of it so he, he, he made no bones about that. And of course uh, the Cowboys uh, Jeff Swaim is a free agent to be uh, testing the market out there. What does uh, the Witten return do uh, to the whole crop at tight end and where, where does that put them as far as the draft is concerned drafting a tight end? You know, I think that that's a, a good question about the uh, the drafting because you know I remember Bill Parcells used to always say about tight ends, keep them coming at all times. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter what you've got on the roster, and so I, I don't think that's going to change their their um, philosophy too much. Maybe you're not drafting one that high, but but you know you do like Schultz and and um, Blake Jarwin there, so you've got some young players. As for Swaim, I think he tests the market and see see what's out there. I, I don't know if they'll bring him back. Of course, Rico's uh, in, in there uh, under contract as well. But but I think with Witten and then helping out Schultz and Jarvin, I don't know if you you don't go into the draft needing a tight end. If you, if you if one falls in your lap that, that you feel like it's a great you know deal for them, then they'll go ahead and do it. But I think as far as free agency draft, you know this is the they they've got their their big tight end here in Jason Witten. All right, Nick, I got to ask you the news before Jason Witten was surrounded by Demarcus Lawrence and the Joneses communicated earlier at the combine this week that they have extended an offer. But realistically, what are you feeling about this situation and how it's going to get done? It's it's happening. Um, it, it, I, it's just it's going to happen. I don't know exactly when, and I don't think they're really too worried about that, um, about the, the, any deadlines because you know in, in years past, if you if you go ahead and put a franchise tag on someone, you're basically saying that's where the starting point is. And in, in this case, twenty million dollars for Demarcus. But but after kind of talking to his agent some at, at the Pro Bowl, and everyone knows that is where the starting point is, anyways. So it's going to be twenty million. So I don't think they really hurt themselves by giving them the, the tag for the second year we know he's not going to have it for very long and uh you know i do think though last year demarcus signed it right away no problem hey i get 17 million that'll be great this year he it might be a little different story i think there's going to be a little bit more importance to try to get that deal done before the deadline but if not it's an easy fallback for them 
All right, Nick, let me ask you about Cole Beasley, as he is a free agent uh, to be. What do you think happens with Cole Beasley? You know, I, I think that, uh, like we said with Swaim, I think he gets a, a, to test the free agent market. You know, all offenses are differently. Some some that will will utilize him in a, in a different way, and I think that he has a chance to have a little bit more value maybe at, at other places. So I think he's going to get the opportunity to test that, see see how that goes. You know, Tavon Austin's also unrestricted. Uh, and then, you know, you've, you've got Alan Hearns in the mix. Uh, you know, last time we saw him, he was getting carted off the field in a pretty gruesome injury. But uh, sounds like from the, the – Combine. Stephen Jones was saying that he feels like uh, Hearns is not only going to come back, he's going to be ready to go, but he's a guy that can play in the slot. You know, slot doesn't have to be your your, your short guys that run around, uh, you know, un underneath routes. It can be a guy that can, that can make some plays. All right, Nick Eatman in the Riders bullpen here at the Star. We appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you throughout the offseason here on the All Blitz. Right. Yes, uh, Cole Beasley is just an interesting situation, Bill, because he's voiced what he thinks on Twitter, and that's the day we're in, right? With social media, they are their own agents almost. And we come back in just a moment. We're going to the Scouting Combine in Indianapolis. Brian brought us and David Hellman standing by. fun time of year here on the Blitz when we get to talk about the draft. We get the big green scouting notebook going, but it's got to be a little different for you this year, Bill, with the Cowboys not having a first round pick. Yeah, but there's still a lot of interest <laughs> in this draft. And by the way, it'll take place in Nashville this year, but we're headed to Indianapolis right now. Our own David Hellman and Brian Broaddus are standing by in the bench press area at the scouting combine. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, Dave Hellman joining me here with the 2019 NFL Combine. Dave, we come here every year, though. We talk about needs, things the Cowboys are looking at. What are you looking at this week? Me, personally, just me, I'm looking at wide receivers. I keep saying that. You know, Cole Beasley is one of the biggest free agents on this Cowboys roster. If he leaves, I know Stephen Jones told us here in Indianapolis, Alan Hearns is an option to play the slot. But I'm looking at slot receivers. We know there's a lot of good ones in the draft. That's that's what I have my eye on. What about you? I'll tell you what, Dave. I think, you know, even though with we, the news coming down about Randy Gregory, I think this team was still going to look at defensive linemen. It tackles, the depth there needs to be addressed. Defensive end surely needs to be addressed. This is a position, I think, going early study, they look will stretch a little bit for the Dallas Cowboys. So two, three, four, somewhere right around there, they can grab them, a defensive lineman. It's funny that you say that. Stephen Jones, you know, while we've been here, he kind of laid out his thought process. He brought up defensive line first. Randy Gregory obviously is suspended. Don't think David Irving's coming back. You need depth along that defensive line, tackle and end. Like I said, he listed it first. Safety's another one, tight end, but kind of getting a feel about defensive line. Maybe they need to add a couple guys there. Yeah, you mentioned safety. That was when Stephen Jones pulled off the top of his head. We'll see if they address that in free agency, mm -hmm. but there's some safeties in this draft as well, though, in that rounds two, three, and four where they can surely grab. Okay, back to you guys. Thanks, guys. Great work out there. You know, I've worked a lot of years with you, Bill Jones, uh -huh. so I have a feeling that there's one guy that you are just all in on right now. Hey, there was one point. guy last year, and he went first pick in the draft. It was Baker Mayfield, and what the first point. guy in my big green NFL draft scouting notebook this year. He's from Allen, Texas, and the biggest news coming out of the scouting combine this weekend, he is 5'10 and 1 8 inch tall. Half an inch shorter than Russell Wilson. <laughs> Weighs more than Russell Wilson. 207 to 204. Kyler Murray is your number one pick in this draft. I thought he was Cliff playing Kings baseball. No, he's not playing baseball. Cliff Kingsbury's got him with the Arizona Cardinals. Wow. 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 You really think that? I really think you that. You really I'm going think that. out on that limb right now. All right. We're taking a break. I got to gather my thoughts because Danny Sarek is going to join us all season long here on the Blitz to talk about upcoming draft potential players for the Dallas Cowboys. That's next. Season update on social media for you guys. I gotta get to the bottom of this, Bill. Demarcus Lawrence welcoming Anthony Brown to the Hot Boys, a cornerback. Wow. Interesting. Be now a hot boy. A lot okay. of players like to explore and travel during the offseason. Chidabe Awuzie is in Thailand. It's a place I think everybody would love to go if they could. And Jeff Keith and his wife Paige welcome a baby girl in early February, Everett Elaine Heath. Nothing better. 
Nothing better than off-season snuggles, let's just put it that way. <laughs> Finally, Leighton Vander Esch giving back to his Salmon River High School. Dropped 45 grand for this weight room, Bill. Well, you can tell Leighton Vander Esch spent a lot of time lifting weights when he was at Salmon River High School, and so why not? And they, they should name the weight room now. The Leighton, they should name the town Leighton Vander They really should. It's uh, now Vander Esch, Idaho. Um, <laughs> great first round draft pick for the Cowboys. And I'm excited that Danny Sarek is going to be joining us all season long to talk about these potential draft picks. Guys that might be here, Danny, it's interesting without a first round pick, but it's going to be great. Who do you have first for us this season? The first player we're going to talk about this season is Auburn quarterback Jared Stidham, who grew up about 100 miles from the star in Stephenville, Texas. His redshirt junior year in 2018, he threw for more than 2,700 yards and 18 touchdowns and led the Tigers to a 63-14 to victory in the Music City Bowl over Purdue, where he threw for 373 yards and five touchdowns. Stidham says a large part about who he is today as a football player stems from his time playing high school football in Stephenville. People don't realize how big football is in Texas until they're kind of in that situation. And, and sure enough, you know, I was lucky enough to, to grow up, you know, playing at a great program somewhere like Stephenville and going to Baylor and playing there for Coach Browles and, and that staff and um, playing in the Big 12. It just, you know, growing up in that situation in Texas, playing football was, was a blessing. Stidham played as a true freshman at Baylor in 2015 before transferring to a local community college and then on to Auburn University. Stidham says his experiences through adversity have molded him into the strong leader he is today, which is a unique quality he will bring to whichever team drafts him. I have a unique perspective on life, just a lot of stuff that I've gone through, whether if it's on the field or off the field. Um, I kind of appreciate things uh, in a different way, so I think it gives me a different perspective. Very confident in my personality. I don't really, you know, change from one personality, you know, on the field or to off the field or, or vice versa. So um, just trying to be the same person at all times and and obviously try, try and turn some heads as well. I think if you're going to draft somebody to, to run your organization for however many years it may be, um, that guy's got to be able to lead those guys in the locker room. And so I think um, a very strong leader, um, somebody that's very confident on and off the field, very confident in his abilities. And I think the last thing is, you know, somebody that's willing to grow in every facet of his game, whether if it's physically or mentally. The 2017 SEC Newcomer of the Year winner compares his play to that of 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. I kind of feel like we're similar in size, um, you know, quick release, can make all the throws, but I think also the thing that can set him apart from, from other guys is, uh, you know, his athletic ability. And, you know, people may not think I'm that athletic, but, you know, I can, I can get out of the pocket and extend plays. Jimmy Garoppolo is not the only NFL quarterback that Stidham mentioned when he's looking at players he admires. He also talked about Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott and admires the way he's been able to lead the team the last three years, including the 2018 NFC East title. Stidham said that the local Texan in him always cheers for people playing football in Texas because there's just so much pride here in the state for that sport. And one of the impressive things about him is having succeeded in the Baylor offense and then going to Auburn and doing the exact same thing. It's going to be very interesting to see what he's able to do in the NFL. Great stuff from you, Danny. We will have her every week leading up to the draft. We're taking our final break. We're getting closer and closer to free agency. Everything in between, Bill Jones will wrap it up for you next. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. And by Dallas Cowboys Football Club. For the ultimate Dallas Cowboys experience, tour the star in Frisco, where the Cowboys train and work. For more information, visit thestarinfrisco.com slash tours. We are so excited to host Kaboo Texas May 10th through the 12th. This is our first ever music, comedy, and art festival, a three-day long event that will blend all of the five senses, have a wonderful entertainment, even a Basque pool, Vegas style, right out on the plaza, complete with humor meat entertainers, as well as great culinary experiences from some of the greatest chefs here in North Texas. 
That's a huge event coming up, and here are some other big events coming up, and Franchise Tag Day is coming up on Tuesday. Cowboys with a decision to make on Demarcus Lawrence. Don't want to give him a second franchise tag, you wouldn't think. Meanwhile, April 15th is when the offseason begins for the Cowboys. Free agency starts a week from Wednesday, and the draft is April 25th through 27th in Nashville. And Lindsay, I still say tight end should be on the shopping list, even with Jason Witten coming back. And we're going to get into that all offseason long. We didn't plan on doing it, but that's what we will do. Week two coming up, we'll try to top episode one right here on The Blitz.